Winning Tennis. Okay, this is Chad with Winning Tennis. Today we're going to look at the common threads of the one-handed backhand. We're going to look at Warinka's backhand first, and then we're going to look at Dimitrov. Okay, so the first thing he did was he made a great unit turn and he has the racket in this vertical position that you see Roger Federer do, you see Dimitrov do it, and you also see Dominic Team do it. You see the best one-handers in the world do it. Notice the 90 degree angle between the forearm and the racket and he's holding the racket by the throat. And it's not hurting the racket though, trust me. Just a little tennis humor there. Okay, he's got most of his um, weight on the back foot, which is his left foot. At this point, if you were looking at him from across the net, you would see a little bit of his back. He really is, has a lot of torque in that upper body. Uh, his shoulders are going this way and his hips are going this way. He's raising the racket. Notice the racket is over his head. That's a key for you people that want to really improve your backhand. Get your racket vertical and make sure that the racket is over, is over your head slightly. You see that with Federer. You see it with Dimitrov. Okay, and he has his, notice he has his chin tuck, tucked almost right over his uh, right shoulder. Now, here is something that's going to happen that you really need to add to your game if you want to Im improve your one-handed backhand. And it's what I call the fishtail. And you can see it right there. And it's pointing out to the left. And I've made a few videos on this before, so you can check those videos out in my one-handed backhand series. Now, notice that his the ball is up, the racket is low. Okay, so now you can see the racket almost did a, a 180 if you watch from right there. So now the butt cap is facing this way and the edge of the racket is facing this way. And that's where they get a lot of power in their one-hander. You do that more than the two. You could actually get more flexibility in terms of that than the two-handed backhand. Notice his arm is straight. I see a lot of club players that do not have that straight arm. We have the extension, beautiful extension, all the way out. And here's another common thread is the long follow through with the racket. Again, in the 90 degree position, there's a lot of geometry in tennis. Now, unlike um, Federer and Dimitrov, Wawrinka doesn't bring his arm back as far. It's not essential you do that. It's just that's the more of the classic style. And Wawrinka opens his body up a little bit more than the other two as well. Beautiful. And once he's there, he holds it very briefly and then he gets back into the ready position. All right, here we go. I put this in the slowest motion I could. And we'll stop here to point out a few things. All right, so he's out of his split step. Notice he's making his unit turn. He's already got his racket almost in a vertical position. His left hand is on the throat of the racket. He's already setting up the grip. And he's stepping out and he's putting his weight onto that left foot. It's the first thing, or it's the first place he's putting his weight. Okay, so he's got his weight entirely on that left leg. That's the rear leg, which is very common because he's going to transfer his weight forward into the shot. So let's see. Okay, now notice how much higher the racket is going up now. The head of the racket is now over his head. Okay, here we can see his arm is bent, almost a 90 degree angle. And here we can see now his chin is almost on his shoulder. So these are some of the things that I'm pointing out with the one-handed backhand that you might want to take into your own game. If you could just use a, a couple of these 
it would probably dramatically uh, improve your game. Okay, so now he's starting to shift. He put his uh, right leg down. He's starting to shift his weight into the shots. Now, here's something I want to point out that a lot of people um, could, could, could benefit from or improve upon. Notice how wide his stance is. I see a lot of club players standing with their feet very close together. And it's known from, uh, you know, from box. I used to box. The wider your stance, generally, the more power within reason the more power you're going to generate if your if your feet are very close together it's not going to allow you to generate that kind of power so you, you may not be aware but you want to take a look at your feet the next time you hit a backhand and even a forehand to make sure your feet are the proper distance apart which is definitely more than shoulder width okay now here's where a lot of the magic happens you notice now the butt cap is facing out towards here, which would be Dimitrov's left. And the, the edge of the racket is facing to the right. Now I call this the fishtail. I've made other videos um, about this. So you can see that those videos uh, about the details of this. But I'm just pointing this out right here. And uh, that racket is actually about a 90 degree angle to his forearm. Okay, now he is hitting a high shot. So this is this is interesting. He's preparing for a shot that's going to be somewhat a little bit below his shoulders or right there. And that's a very difficult shot to hit for a one-handed backhand. It's one thing to just get it back, but it's another thing to rip it. So he's actually he actually uh notice the hand is is up here and how far the racket is dropped below so his racket is going to come up and meet the ball and I, th I think a lot of club players their racket would be like this and would not be dropped so let's take a look and see what he does here he now he let go of the racket with his left hand He's starting to move his weight again into the front foot okay and now here we can see he again achieves that 90 degree position his body is opening up slightly. And again, 90 degree position. And he's a, he looks a little off here because it's, he's hitting a high shot, but this is necessary to adjust for it. Okay, and that's where the topspin happens. If you noticed when he made contact, he turned the racket face slightly down to put a little bit of topspin on that ball. Now you do have to be strong because from this point, now the ball has already left the racket and you're gonna to have to pull across on the high shot. Okay, so the, keep in mind on the high shot for the one handed backhand that the racket head is going to be over the hand. If your racket head is not over the hand, then you're doing it wrong. This is on the high one handed backhands. Notice it was, it was lower, much lower than the hand it met the ball and then went higher. So that, that's interesting. And his hand, his left hand is still down here, but it's, it should start retracting back shortly. Okay, let's play it. Yep, there's the left hand going back. Notice that when he started the stroke, his left leg, um, which was his, is his rear leg, that had all the weight on it. And now he's jumping onto his right leg, putting all the weight on it. So it's a combination of putting your weight into the ball, swinging fast enough, using the 90 degree angles, allowing the racket head to drop and come up, and having that nice follow through. Okay, so that, that's, that's a stretch right there that uh, is very uncomfortable for me. I usually can't go back that far, but then again, I'm not a, a top 10 tennis player. And then once he finishes the stroke, he holds it for a very brief time and he'll come back into the ready position. And here I am hitting a few one-handed and two-handed backhands to show you my form. If you like this channel, please subscribe and thanks for watching.